The information I'm after here, it's all about bees. Not just what bees, but how many bees are out here in this great big forest. This is the best trick there is for studying bees. You put out an attractant that gets a male bee to come out of the forest. And I can count it and measure it and identify it and do all my science. And there are bees coming in already. When I put out a little bit of the chemical, the bees come to it thinking, I'm in luck. I found an orchid and I'm going to collect some of that smell from the orchid because the male bees must have this to be successful mating with the females. It's perfume if you want, but only males get it and they keep it in a hollow spot in their hind legs, which is a very bizarre thing. There aren't other bees that do this, just these rare orchid bees in the tropical forest. It so happens right here in Panama, I have the chance to do things that no one has ever done before. Years ago, we used to think in the tropics, things are very stable. Life just thrives and everything stays pretty much the same. Once we have real information, like from these bees, uh, we see that things go up and down and they go up and down in drastic ways. It's becoming very important in this world to keep good records on how abundant things like bees are because of the very important work they do. They pollinate flowers. They make this forest possible. With no bees to visit the flowers and move pollen around, there are no seeds, there's no fruit, there's nothing. This is absolutely the most interesting, fun kind of activity I can imagine. It's not work. How could you call this work? <laughs> this is creative fun. This, this feeds me every day. It, it gives me energy, gives me hope, makes me happy I'm here. Let's see if anybody's really there. Bees do live somewhere. And these normally live in trees. But this one happens to be a colony I put in a nest box like this. First thing that comes out is pollen. Bees have a long and successful relationship with flowering plants, mostly because of this stuff called pollen. Pollen is about 30-40% protein. That's, that's better than steak. It's also tasty. I'm not kidding. This is, this is very good. <laughs> Every social bee colony is actually a little information gathering station, if you want to think of it that way. These bees fly out maybe a kilometer away, survey the whole area, pick the flowering plants that they can use and bring the pollen or nectar back to their nest. So once you learn to interpret the information that's here, which is by identifying the pollen the bees have brought in, you know their ecology completely from A to Z and there's no other way to get that information. After getting a bee pollen sample out of a beehive, I bring it back here to our lab at the Tropical Research Institute and we take that pollen sample, we wash it, we dress it up, put it on a microscope slide, and then we compare it to our known species reference material of different kinds of pollen grains to figure out what that bee has been up to, what its ecological ties are, what food it eats, and what it pollinates, basically. About one in 50 is in perfect condition. The rest are kind of shredded looking, that's too bad. If nobody had a chance to take a good long look at, at bees and what flowers they really go to and what pollination they really do or don't do, we would have a pretty biased and inaccurate picture of what they're about. Every bee tells its own story is what, what I've been finding all the way through this. And it, it comes out making me feel a lot better because I think we're a few steps closer to knowing how nature really works. <laughs>